Greetings, you Stormer. It's the 10th of June, 2024. It's been a while. We're back with a very infrequent video update. So, as you can see, we're looking down on Europe, and the main story in Europe is that there is a low pressure system moving in towards the into the western Mediterranean. And the problem here is that it's bringing tons of thunderstorms and rain and even snow to high ground in the Alps. The Danube is in flood and this rain is going to stick around for a few days. We're going to look at this and we're going to look at a bunch of other stuff. So let's get started. This system in the Western Mediterranean has already brought heavy rain and flash flooding to Cologne, Sioux, Salève in the Haute Savoy province department in the Auvergne Rhone Alps region in Eastern France yesterday evening. And in Spain, severe thunderstorms. We've got reports of large hail, very large hail in Vega de Tajo, Teruel. I seriously cannot pronounce anything. Well, I wanted to show you guys a satellite animation of these flooding events. And actually we can see this is the infrared. So where it's these, these uh, sort of blue colors into the pinks and into this, what is that? Cyan and greens. These are the really deep thunderstorms where we're getting this severe flooding rain. And you can see it in southwestern France over here. But you might notice some of these labels <laughs> Not correct, uh, Syrah. Uh, this is uh, not France. France is up here. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's one problem. The other problem is that the real Earth viewer, which is not this one, but another one, it's it's lost some of its options for a global infrared, and uh, that's really annoying. But um, so I've been looking at that. We'll get back to that and see if we can sort it out. But so this is our situation and you can see there's also missing satellite imagery here. It jumps from uh, the, I think it starts on the 8th and then it jumps forward at some point at, right at the end where it jumps to today. And then you can see the heavy rain over the Alps. So lots of problems here, lots of problems, but there are always problems. So let's take a look at this rainfall anyway. So at the moment, this the time is, I'm in Australia, so this is Australia time. So you have to subtract about uh, eight or nine hours to get to Europe time. And you can see all of the thunderstorms in the European Center model over Italy and into the Alps at the start, at present time. And then as we move forward, those thunderstorms are moving down, kind of focusing into the southern flanks of the Alps as we go into Tuesday. And then we've got stuff over the Milan Basin and then, oh, heading into Slovenia in particular. So I'm going to check the rainfall totals. You can see how it hangs around. It really hangs around for Tuesday, Wednesday. So this really looks like a potential flash flooding at times. And the other thing is you'll notice snow beginning to appear over the higher mountains. So we're going to look at the rainfall totals and the snowfall totals. This really does continue. And then it's finally clearing out by the end of the week. So here are our rainfall totals for northern Italy. You can see to start with in the next 12 hours, the heaviest rain is in the Milan Basin. And we've got values of 57, 58 millimeters in 12 hours, that's a lot. And so the next 24 hours, it builds up, spreads over into the Northern Alps. And then looks like for our next three day total, our biggest values are off in far, Eastern Italy, where we've got 140 millimeters. And then the five days goes up further. So yeah, pretty, pretty heavy rainfall, particularly for Northern Italy and into the, into the Alps. Let's take a look at the total snowfall. And so this rain is gonna persist through this week. So let's look at the total snowfall. And if we go to new snow in Windy, We'll see that for the next five days, next 10 days, next five days, next three days. Let's go for next five days. And it looks like it's actually in southwestern Austria, where you get the largest values. And that is approaching half a meter, not quite there, 40 centimeters. And another interesting thing with this event in the Western Mediterranean, sweeping up into Italy, is that it has brought up dust from the Sahara into over Sardinia and Corsica. This is the terror 
This is the Aqua Modis satellite polar orbiter. We've got Italy up here, France over here, and Spain over on the left. And the cool thing is we can bring this into Google Earth and do some good old flyover. So let's go over here and fly over this thing very slowly. So you can see actually the dust coming off Algeria here. And um, maybe we should look back at the previous days to see how this originated. You can see how it crosses the southern Mediterranean and then envelops Sardinia, where there have been some fires in Sardinia, and then over Corsica, and then now, and then it's coming up into Italy. So this was actually yesterday afternoon. So now this should be already up and into the Alps. And in fact, we have got some pictures coming in of the Alps with some very hazy skies. Meanwhile, I'll up in far northwestern Europe, we've got an eruption ongoing in Iceland. Sundakulur. I don't know how to pronounce it, unfortunately. But you might be wondering why I'm looking down with GOES-16. That's looking down on the Americas. But actually, GOES-16, right on the edge, does actually have Iceland right in here. And why am I not looking at the Meteosat satellite? Because it's, it's coarser res. It's not so good. Coarser resolution. So what we can do here, and this is probably not going to work, but it has worked before. Uh, we can look at the fire temperatures in order to see if we can see the volcano. So just go to the left and go down to fire temperatures. Where are they? Over here. And then we'll, uh, you often have to kind of reload this a couple of times. This probably isn't going to work, by the way, but uh, it has worked in the past. So as you can see, we can't see anything. I think the, the eruption is down here. And so sometimes you can see a little bit of red where it's coming in. And is this gonna be an epic fail? Probably. So let's just 30 minute in. You can go down here and select a greater interval so you can cover a longer time period. I'm just gonna to jump to one hour and then we'll go back the last 24 and see if we can see anything. Probably not, probably not. Probably not. Let's go. Come on now. All right. So as you can see, you know what? This is what happens. You know? Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, we complete each other's sentences. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's a Bo Bojack Horseman clip. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing there. Sorry about that. Sometimes it doesn't work. But anyway, that's how you do it. And so you can do it yourself. And when you start to see red blobs in these imageries, in fact, I'll just show you what it looks like because there's bound to be a fire somewhere. There's some hot spots down here over the US. Actually, that's Canada. That's out in, yep. So we've got fires in Canada that you can see. So that would, that's what it would look like. Oh yeah, we are back, baby. We have seen some pretty good mistakes so far in this video. Let's see. Animation skips, mislabeled countries, no heat signatures, false searches. So let's see if we can do a bit better over Central West Asia. Here we're looking down on India and you can see that this is not working too well, but hopefully this animation should load. You've got to be patient with RAM MB slider. It sometimes takes some time to load. We've got the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, Oman, over here. And then the thing with India is we've got the monsoon kind of getting into 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 motion. Thunderstorms over here, over Bangladesh, and into northeastern India. And also a lot of thunderstorms into Myanmar, and along the west coast of India, Kerala, and Bombay, getting some heavy rain there. You know what, let's just see how the labels are over this area. If you want to put on country labels in Ram and V slider, just click on add map and country labels. Let's see if we got any problems here. Looks, Iraq is kind of off on the border with Iran, but it's all right. Um, generally a bit of a mess over there in the Middle East and Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, could be a bit more central, Maldives. Yeah, not too bad. 
Laos, Vietnam. Any mistakes? Can you see anything? I think it's all good. We also had some big thunderstorms over Turkey recently. With some pretty nasty winds in one of the storms, this is probably from a downdraft outflow, would be my guess, but it took off the roof of this building, which was a school in Van Air Kiss District, Turkey. Let's take a look at Australia Oceania. And right away, can you spot it? Yes, indeed. Some really, really bad labeling here. I don't know what is going on. Sarah, come on. <laughs> uh, love you guys. Um, so New Zealand is, for some reason, in the middle of the Tasman Sea. Should be over here. And what on earth is Fiji doing here? Should be here. I don't know what is going on. So I'm going to get rid of all of these labels because they're totally ridiculous and let's go get rid of these all right bye bye you know these countries anyway australia so we've got a vigorous low pressure system moving in this is going to be bringing heavy rain into melbourne but the bigger story perhaps well it's been really really wet on new south wales coast in recent days but uh looking forward we've got a storm system i think it's this one that's going to be moving in towards the tasman sea and then it's going to kind of stall near New Zealand and bring lots of heavy rain to New Zealand. So let's take a look at that. So here is our rainfall, thunderstorm, and snow map from Windy ECMW European Centre model. And this is the frontal system moving in towards Victoria, southeastern Australia, and into Tasmania. And it's actually Tasmania that looks like it's going to get the heaviest rain. And this is overnight tonight, Tuesday into Tuesday, early hours of the morning. That's when things really hit off and we're looking at really heavy rain across the, most of Tasmania, but particularly across the uh, northwestern quadrant. And as this moves through, the Mer Melbourne gets rain, less rain than Tasmania, but it's, it's coming in, it's gonna be quite a wet day. And as we move through, you see that as we move through, the cold front is gonna push down colder air from the south and as this happens we'll see some of this precipitation turning to snow over the higher mountains of tasmania and also in the australian alps out here so now you can see down here in tasmania we've got the snowfall symbols coming in so we're looking at uh, a reasonable amount of snow we'll check the totals in a moment actually it's it's probably not that much because it's post frontal but um yeah there we go there's snow there and now we've got the system moving in towards the Tasman Sea and this is where it kind of stalls out we'll see it go in towards New Zealand we've got snow beginning to appear in the Australian Alps as the system moves through and then it's very wet begins to get very wet along the west coast of the South Island and up into Auckland too as the system kind of stalls a little bit there it's moving down and then as the winds shift round towards the northeast then the the rain is coming in towards the usually dry east coast of the south island so christchurch looking to get some rain as we move towards next weekend according to the european center model and really some heavy rain then being shown in the far southeastern side of new zealand towards the end of the week next weekend so we'll see how that pans out but uh, probably for a large scale system like this, it's probably not too far off what's gonna happen. Now, definitely something we're gonna keep an eye out. And on that note, I'm gonna roll and roll off from this video and end it. Uh, that makes sense. So yeah, see you in the next one. We're gonna, we've got lots of stuff coming up and it's gonna be much better than this video in terms of organization. Later.